Thank you for joining us today for the webinar on Extend Oracle Approvals Management to Enhance Organizational Productivity. Today we are going to see a live demo of the AME process. My name is Sangeeta Jash and I am the Assistant Manager Marketing Communications at Jade Global. Now I would like to introduce Dave. Dave is a principal consultant at Jade Global with over seven years of implementation experience in Oracle Applications eBusiness Suite 11i and R12 and three years of experience in core Oracle technologies. And again, I'm Sangeeta Jash, Assistant Manager Marketing Communications here at Jade Global and also your moderator today for this webinar. I will go ahead and pass it to Dave now who will share the poll answer, review the agenda and continue with the presentation. Over to you, Dave. Okay, thank you, Sangeeta. Uh, hello, everyone. Uh, good morning, and thanks for joining the webinar. It's a nice uh, sunny day here in San Jose with mild cold breeze. So, my name is Dave Narayan, and I'm working with Jade Global uh, as a principal consultant. Today, I'm going to give a presentation on how you can enhance your organization productivity by extending Oracle Approvals Management Engine that is popularly known as AME. Our agenda for today is as follows. We'll first start with introduction to Oracle AME followed by AME Basics. We'll then move to various applications of AME followed by a recorded live demonstration on how we can extend AME for role or responsibility access request and its approval. We will then conclude our session with AME implementation considerations. Okay, we now move to introduction part. So first thing is, uh, it is a simple to use rules engine. So basically uh, Oracle uh, approvals management engine is a simple to use rules engine for defining approval policy. Second is, it is generic in nature. Uh, which means it can be used where no integration currently exists. Standardizing on one engine reduces the cost for customer as well as consulting and support since only one set of skills are required. The next is it is flexible and highly extensible. So it provides a great deal of flexibility for creating the approval processes and organization needs usually without writing any custom code. Only uh, minimal or no coding is required to set up AME rules. AME is, AME is highly extensible also. If an organization has special requirements that AME CDF functionality does not provide, one can write AME extensions that meet organization's requirements. So this is about the introduction to AME that is popularly known as Oracle Approvals Management. We now move to AME Basics. Okay, so the first thing is, it is an approval management framework which is within Oracle eBusiness Suite. There is no separate thing it is integrated, it is directly integrated with Oracle eBusiness Suite. Second one is, it is a part of Oracle eBusiness Suite and no additional cost or no additional license fee is required to implement the AME. Third one is, it provides various types of CDA transactions, it provides framework to business process for various types of transactions. So basically it provides various types of CDA transactions for different business functions. AME rules can be configured without coding and approvals are sent to approvals at runtime for various types of transactions as per the approval hierarchy setup. The approval, the approval history can also be maintained like how many approvals the request was sent, when it was sent and what was the approvals response. So basically, in summary, we can say it enables to configure rules without coding. It evaluates approvals at runtime for transactions. It provides administrative dashboard for maintenance of these rules and it maintains and tracks approval history. So the audit trail can also be maintained. 
moving on to next we have the AME components so basically we have uh, some major components of AME those are transition types attributes conditions action types and actions approval groups and rules okay first we uh, talk about the transaction type so a transaction type describes the type of transaction on which approval rules will be based the transaction type can be an oracle application cd transaction or any other custom transaction the Oracle application CJ transaction can be a transaction type such as a purchase equation like payable invoice, expense report or uh, you can say uh, accounting journal okay and you can also uh, define a custom transaction type that can be created and integrated with any. Second one is the attributes. So attributes are basically variables that represent business data. So attributes can be, it can be an invoice amount, it can be a supplier name, it can be a customer name, it can be a supplier site. These variables are building blocks of rule development and can be stated which stores constant value or dynamic value. Constant value is hard coded value for these attributes and dynamic value is derived at runtime using some SQL query. Attribute data types can be, uh, it can be a numeric data type, it can be a date or it can be a alphanumeric. The next component of AME is conditions. So conditions are used to evaluate the value of attributes in a transaction. The result of a condition is either true or false. Generally, this condition represents the if part of an statement. The next component is action types and actions. So action represents one part of approval rule. Okay, so action represents one part of approval rule. It provides instruction to AME when a condition is satisfied. It also determines approvers and number of approvers. Action types are basically group of actions. Next one is the approval groups. Approval group determines approvers from Oracle applications, generally from the uh, HR model, HRMS model. So these can be static or dynamic. The static approval group has uh, defined approvers or uh, predefined approvers which are constant and cannot be changed at one time. But the dynamic approval group determines approver at runtime. And these dynamic approvers that can be based on some uh, business logic or some SQL query. The last component of AME is the rules. So rules are defined by associating the conditions that ultimately determines whether a particular business case has been satisfied. It is a key component of AME which consists of attributes, conditions, actions or action types. So these are basically the main AME components which, is, which I just described here. Okay, moving on. Okay, now you have a poll question. Okay, so basically I would like to ask from you that what, for which purpose you people are using the AME. So it are you using the AME for purchase equation approval, AP invoice approval 
or expense report approval or some other type of approval or not using the AME at all. So I'll give some, uh, I'll, I'll wait for some seconds to get the poll answers. Okay, we'll close the poll now. Okay, we move to the move ad and talk about the advantages of using the AME. So there are multiple advantages a business can get if they have implemented Oracle Approvals Management Engine. The first one is the approval rules, which can be developed by users with minimal or almost no development assistance. The second advantage of using the AME is that the approval routing can leverage some of the hierarchical structures that already exist in Oracle, such as employee supervisor hierarchy or HR position hierarchy. Another advantage of using the AME is that the approval list can also leverage custom hierarchies. For example, apart from HR supervisor and HR position hierarchy, there may be other custom developed hierarchies which are being used for custom transaction types. These custom transaction hierarchies can also be used to generate the approval list. So if the user wants a complete new custom approval list, then they will first need to set up this custom hierarchy and then they can use this hierarchy for their approval. The next one is AME automatically responds to changes that may occur in an organization during transactions approval process. The changes can include organizational hierarchy change that is supervisor or manager change or modification to an AME rule or even changes to the value of the current transaction. The most, the most important advantage of the AME is it allows parallel approvals. So the parallel approval process imposes a tree-like structure and enables each part of the tree to progress through its approval cycle independently. This enables the approval process of each item in the transaction to continue irrespective of the progress of approval of other items. This greatly reduces the approval process time. So this is a very important advantage of AME which allows a parallel approval. Okay. So next one is, further it is an excellent alternative to Oracle workflow customization as we all know that if we want to go ahead with the Oracle workflow customization, it will require considerable amount of time and resources and therefore increases the implementation cost also. So these are the main advantages of using the uh, Oracle approval management engine. Okay, we now move to AME applications. So by now, AME has been mainly used for purchase requisition approvals, HR self-service approvals, I recruitment approvals, AP invoice approvals, and expense report approvals. 
So these are the common known transaction types for which AME is basically implemented. Apart from that, there are a lot of other applications also that are supported by AME. This includes human capital management like uh, HRMS, advanced benefits, learning management, payroll, supply chain management which includes inventory, bill of materials, cash management, work in process, manufacturing execution, procurement applications which includes your purchasing, eye procurement, eye supplier and sourcing. Similarly, we have the financial applications which includes the uh, payables and receivables modules, lease and finance management, we have the product management, the services, sales and controls. So basically this list is not exclusive, uh, only some of the popular modules are listed here. So if you, if you go, uh, if you check AME supports uh, more than 200 transaction types and it supports a lot of other applications also. Okay, we uh, now move ahead to uh, how we can use AME for custom application. So uh, we can call AME from custom applications also. There are some standard APIs provided by Oracle which can be used to call AME from custom applications too. These APIs are used to get the approval list, to get the next approval and to update the approval status. So you can see in the diagram here the custom application is sending the notifications using AME and it is capturing the responses also. So if we are planning to integrate AME with the custom applications, we have to do the same setups as we, uh, as we uh, generally do for a serial transaction type. So we have to define the custom transaction type, then we have to define the attributes, condition, approval groups, action type, and action, and rules. So basically here you will see if you want to call the AME from custom applications, so Oracle has already provided the, uh, some of the seeded APIs like you can see in the screen that we have AME API to get all approvals which is used to get the approval list, AME API 2 dot get next approvals one which is used to get the next approval in the next approval in the hierarchy and AME API dot update approval status too which is used to update the approval status. Okay, moving on to next. So, now I am going to provide you a short demo on how we can, how an Oracle, uh, how we can implement or how an Oracle responsibility access request and its approval can be automated using DME. So basically we have expanded, we have customized, we have created one custom transaction type and using that custom transaction type we will show how you can use AME or how you can extend AME to implement approvals for your uh, application access request. Okay, so here are the steps that we need to follow. So the first one is the self-service registration process. So before a user can submit a request or uh, before a user submits a request for access to the application or a particular responsibility, 
that responsibility is required to be registered using the registration process by either the responsibility owner or by the sysadmin user. The users would be able to make access request to only those responsibilities which have been registered using the registration process. Here are the steps to achieve this registration process. So basically, the system administrator or sysadmin logs in as a sysadmin user. He selects the user management responsibility. He goes to the registration process tab, create the registration process for the role or responsibility and specify AME transaction type to implement approval for access request. Then you can use the seeded transaction type or own custom transaction type in Oracle approvals management. So here in the demo we have created one custom transaction type which is used to implement the access request and approval for a responsibility access. Okay, so I'll I'll first give you a short demo on this self-service registration process. Okay, so basically the system administrator logs in to the system or Apple system using the sysadmin user. He goes to the user management responsibility. Here, he goes to the user management responsibility and you will see the registration process tab here, the registration process link here. Okay, there is a button create registration process which is used to create the registration process. Now you specify, now here you specify the rule, uh, sorry, here you specify the role. So role is basically the role or responsibility for which you want users to make access requests. So we will select from the allowee the responsibility or role so let, let's take a particular responsibility let's take one inventory responsibility so we'll say we'll take uh, the Brazilian inventory responsibility Okay, in that type, we select the additional access or self-service. Okay, here, when you select the responsibility or role, the registration process code and display name and descriptions are automatically populated. Similarly, the application name is also automatically populated. Now, active from date is populated with the current date. You can also specify the active to date here. So let's 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 suppose you want uh, you want users to make uh, a request for this responsibility access only from 24th November 2013 to 30th November 2013. So you can provide an active to date here uh, as the 30th November 2013. We will not provide any active to dates here. So we we'll click on the next button. Here you don't need to specify the registration start page. You provide the notifications. 
click on the notification LOV and you select the last one user management additional access workflow start. So basically which workflow will be used for sending the approval notification to users. So this describes that. Now here is the transaction type you can specify. So here basically uh, if, you, if you want to use the CDET transaction type you can specify the CDET transaction type here or you can select from the LOV icon the CDET transaction type. If you want to implement a custom approval process and if you have created a custom transaction type then you can specify the custom transaction type here. So basically for this demo purpose I have specified a custom transaction, I have created a custom transaction type and I am specifying it here. Next, you click on the next button. Okay, in the next screen you can say whether only users in the selected groups would be able to uh, make access to this responsibility or you want all the users to make access, uh, to make access request to this particular responsibility. and then you click on the submit button to complete the registration process. Yeah, so you get a, you get a confirmation that the Brazilian inventory registration process has been successfully created. So this is the first step uh, using which you create the registration process. Okay, so these are the steps we did it in the demo. We logged in as a sysadmin user, we selected the user management responsibility, we selected the registration process tab, we created the registration process for that particular uh, inventory responsibility uh, and we specified the custom AMI transaction type we created that we have already created. Okay, so I got uh, yeah, so I got one question. Are these setups predefined? So my answer is yes. These setups are predefined. So basically, for the demo purpose, I did all these setups. I created one tra custom transaction type. I set it up. I set it. Uh, I set up the approval hierarchy. Uh, yes. So the answer is yes. These setups are predefined. Okay, so this is the process of creating the self-service registration or you can say this is the process for creating the registration for a particular responsibility or role. Next, we move to self-service access request and approval process. Now, once the registration process is complete for a responsibility or role, users can go ahead and make request for that responsibility access. So here I'll, I'll, I'll also uh, give you a short demo on how a user can make access request to that particular responsibility and how the approval is done. So for the demo purpose, uh, as you know, uh, we are using a custom transaction type and we have implemented two levels of approval. So in the custom transaction type, uh, I have implemented two levels of approvals. The first, the first level of approval is the employee's HR supervisor or HR manager and the second level of approval is responsibility owner. And for this demo purpose, I have set up um, admin Juan as a user uh, who would submit a request for a particular responsibility access. Uh, the second person, Robert Alcabau, is set up as an admin's HR manager who will get a notification to approve admins, 
Excel request and app uh, set up myself as a sysadmin. So after admin, uh, after uh, Robert approves the request, the approval notification comes to me, comes to sysadmin for the final approval. Okay, so uh, you can you can see on my screen uh, in the diagram. So user he logs into EPS, he logs into uh, Oracle Business Suite, he in, initiates the access request to manager, to his HR manager, the manager approves it, it is notified to the user that your request has been approved. Now, after the first level of approval, uh, it, the approval request goes to the responsibility owner, the responsibility owner approves the request and it is notified to user once the responsibility owner approves the request the responsibility is automatically assigned to the user there is no manual intervention uh, required when the final level of approval is completed okay so i'll i'll just provide the demo for this Okay, so after the registration process is completed, we log out from Rackley Business Suite and now, now the user will go ahead and make access request for this responsibility for which the registration process, process has been done. So e Juan or admin Juan he logs into Oracle application. So each one is basically a user. Okay, he logs into Oracle applications. He goes to the preferences link, which is situated uh, in the upper right corner. Okay, now go to the access request link. and there is a button for request access he clicks on that link he clicks on that button request access okay so you will see here that there are three responsibility uh, three rules uh, provided here so basically we created the registration process for Brazilian inventory responsibility okay so uh, yeah, we will we'll, uh, for this demo purpose we'll go with the Brazilian inventory responsibility access, and for and for the rest of the two uh, responsibility or role you are able to see here. So for these responsibilities also the registration process has been done. So that's why it is showing here. Okay. So the user now checks the responsibility for which he wants the access and clicks on the next next button okay now the user provides a justification why he wants this responsibility this justification is a required field so we'll just say Brazil inventory access or something after providing the justification click on the next button and submit it. Okay, so this completes this completes the access request. Okay, now user admin has requested for the Brazilian inventory responsibility. So if you see, if you see here the Brazilian inventory responsibility is showing as a pending status. Now, if you click on the link which is near to the pending, uh, pending status or if you click on the icon, then you will get to know that this access request is pending with whom. So if you see here, 
So role is Brazilian inventory. Status is showing as a pending, and current approver is Robert Alcabau. So basically, Robert Alcabau is set up as a HR manager or HR supervisor of Edmund. So that's why the first level of approval goes to Robert Alcabau. Okay. Now, user has created, uh, user has done with his part. Now, when user's supervisor or HR manager, Robert, logs into Oracle C Business Suite, he will get a notification to approve or reject the request for responsibility access. So, when the user's HR supervisor or HR manager logs into the system, Okay, so he'll go to the notifications page. It takes some time to uh, reflect the notifications, so we'll just okay, we'll just check the notifications. Okay, so you can see here that. The user's supervisor or user's manager got a notification from Joanne Admin for type UMX additional access request workflow and the subject is role request 768 Brazilian inventory for admin Joanne. So this is a notification, this is the approval notification which is lying with the user's HR manager. Now Robert, being the manager of Edmund, opens this notification. And he has the option. Okay. Now if you see here, if you see here, so you have the action history. You have the history of the uh, history of the access request. So when the access request was submitted. Okay, uh, the action date is showing that. Okay, now from from which person or from which user, which employee the notification has come. So it is showing as you an admin and to which person the notification has gone for approval. So it is showing as Alcaba or Robert. Okay, now the user's manager has the uh, choice of either approving the notification or approving the access request or he has the uh, choice of rejecting the approval request or he can uh, request for information using these three buttons. Okay, so Robert <coughs> he just if he wants he can provide a note and click on the approve button to approve this request. Okay, now if you see, uh, there are no open notifications. Okay, and this notification has been closed. So once you once you perform any action on the notification, the notification is closed. Okay, now admin can see admin can log in into Oracle applications and can check what is the status of his request. Okay. Okay. So I got I got some more questions here. So, yeah, so it is, 
okay the question that was asked to me is can you restrict certain roles for certain users so the answer is yes we can restrict certain roles to certain users so while uh, while doing the registration process you must have seen that um, in the last screen or in the last uh, page uh, you have the option whether this request can be made for uh, whether this request can be made by all the users or the selected group of users so there you can restrict this and the next question that was asked is do the managers or approvers receive any kind of email notifications through AME? So the answer is yes. So if you have uh, if you have properly set up your workflow mailer, then you will get the workflow notifications. As a uh, uh, you will get email notification to approve the request or to reject the request. So basically, in order to get the yeah, so basically in order to get the email approval notifications, you should assign valid email addresses to all the users and approvers. That is the first um, checklist. Second is that the workflow notification mailer should be up and running. That is the second checklist you have to take care. And the third one is users email preferences should be properly defined or properly set up. That is the third thing. So, okay. So, if you go to the preferences tab, you will see that what email preferences users want. So, basically, that would be uh, HTML mail or HTML mail with attachments. So, that preferences should also be set up correctly in order to receive the mails, electronic mail. Okay. So, any other questions? Okay, the next question that was asked is, can the manager request a role on behalf of the on uh, on behalf of their employees? Yes, it can be it can be done it can be done. So basically, uh, yeah, it can be done. So there is a process of uh, delegation of roles. So that can be done. Okay. Now, the first level of approval has been completed, so we now move on to the second level of approval. Okay, so by now you have seen that uh, first we did the registration process for the uh, responsibility. Second thing, user admin, he logs into Oracle, he logs into Oracle and he makes a Excel request for that Brazilian inventory responsibility. Next thing, Robert Alcabao, who is a manager for admin, he logs into Oracle, he sees a notification in his notifications window and he approves the notification. So the first level of approval is done. Now after Robert approves the notification, the approval goes to the system administrator or you can say the responsibility owner. So you can check here. Okay, so when, yeah, so when admin logs into Oracle, okay, now he sees the Brazilian inventory responsibility and it is still showing as a pending status. So if you, if he clicks on the icon, he sees the current approver as me. So I am set up as a responsibility owner or a sysadmin user. Okay, so I am the current approver now. Okay, so what I'll do is now I'll log into Oracle or the sysadmin. I'm the sysadmin, so I'll log into Oracle as a sysadmin user. So sysadmin is basically a responsibility owner. Okay, when 
system administrator or responsibility owner logs into the system, he sees a notification. So you can see role request 768 Brazilian inventory for admin jewel. Okay, this is a open notification which is which is pending in my queue for any action. So if you see here, okay, so if you see here, you can see the history of this particular access request or history of this uh, notification. So this access request was submitted by admin Joan. Okay, it went to Robert Alcabau. Robert Alcabau approved it. Now it has come to me for approval or it has come to system administrator for approval. So now the system administrator has the option to approve this request or he has the option to reject this request or he can reassign it or he can request for any other information. So as a system administrator I provided some notes approved and then I will click on the approve button to approve this access request. Okay. So once I, once the system administrator approve, approves it, the notification is automatically closed. So you will not see the notifications under work list. Okay. Now approval has been done at all levels because I set it up only for two levels. So uh, both the levels, uh, the approval is done. So now if admin logs into Oracle and checks his status, he will see that this request has been assigned, this request is completed and the responsibility is assigned to him. So admin as a user, he logs into Oracle, he goes to the preferences link. You can also see here in the work list that it is approved. He goes to the preferences link, he goes to the access request. Okay, it was for Brazil's inventory. Okay, Brazilian inventory. If you see here, the status is showing as assigned. It means once all the approval is completed, the status would be assigned and the responsibility would be assigned to user. Now, if you see here, so, uh, so yeah, so basically you would not see the Brazilian uh, inventory responsibility here. It would take some time to reflect it. So the option is to we have to log out from the system, log in again or we can clear the cache also. We can clear the cache and see the results immediately. So what I'll do here, I'll, I'll log in as a sysadmin, I'll clear the cache and then again I'll log in as a uh, admin join and I'll see the responsibility. So I go to functional administrator to clear the cache. So this I am doing in order to reflect the uh, changes immediately and performing this step. Otherwise uh, I can log out. Uh, I, I can wait for some time, I can log out and if I log in again, I will see the changes. Okay, so you, 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 you have seen that caches have been cleared. So now, uh, if admin logs into our Apple, he would see the responsibility and he would be able to access it. So if, if now if the user logs into Oracle, so he will say in the left hand side you can see the Brazilian, Brazilian responsibility, inventory responsibility is automatically assigned to the user. So there are no manual steps required to assign this responsibility now. Once all the levels of approval is completed, this responsibility will automatically be assigned to the user. There is no DB activity required, nothing is required. 
So this completes my demo for uh, application access request and approvals. Okay. So we we I, I demonstrated this to you. Uh, how a user can make a responsibility access request and how the approvals are done. Now, so what, what are the features and functionality and advantages for this? So the features and functionality is basically uh, we have the automated user responsibility creation. Uh, we have the automated approval process we have the email notification functionality also so here if you if you if your notification mailers are up and running and all the setups are proper you will get an email notification for approval there is no need to log into oracle managers can get the uh, approval notifications in their email they can approve it directly from the email now it provides a audit support also and advantages for this is it will free up DBA time, so you, you must have seen there is no DBA activity required for this. So once all the approvals are done, the responsibility is automatically assigned to the user. It provides a support audit. It leverages existing investments in EBS and there is not much maintenance required to support this. Okay, we now move on to AME implementation. <clears throat> so how to implement this is that uh, the implementation process starts with the basic installation which includes installation of AME, set up AME security and set up uh, a, a, a user profile which is called AME install. After the installation is complete, we do the approval process setup. This process includes various steps like planning your approval process, uh, identify your business cases, uh, identify the components of the approval process, uh, planning a test case for each business case, implementing transaction types, configuring transaction types and uh, uh, next one is creating uh, item class usages, creating attributes, creating conditions, creating approval groups and identifying the action types, defining rules, testing approval rules and some additional tasks. Okay, so all these steps are not mandatory. There are some steps which are mandatory. Uh, rest are uh, optional steps. I think I got a question here. So is AME just a part of regular workflow? How is it different? Okay. Is AME just a part of so I got a question, uh, it is saying, it is asking that is AME just part of regular workflow? How is it different? Okay, so uh, basically AME is, yeah, so it is not, you, you cannot say it is a part of a workflow, so basically AME works with workflow. So AME and workflow are tightly integrated. It is not different from workflow. So if you, if you implement Let's suppose if you implement AME for payable invoice approval, so AME works with payable invoice approval workflow to implement the approvals. Okay, so this is about the implementation process. Next we move on to implementation considerations. So uh, with the implementation considerations, we will conclude our session. So uh, the implementation consideration tells you what all things you need to take care before you proceed with the implementation. So the first one is consider the company policies before implementing approval management. 
design approval matrix and decision tree on a paper and use that as a basis for your rules and uh, the next one is uh, you have to purge your old approval transactions periodically uh, there is a CJ concurrent program available uh, which is named as approval management transactions data purge so you should purge your old approval transactions uh, time to time so that uh, your performance is not degraded and the next thing is uh, if you are in, if you are on 11i so 11i supports only employee supervisor hierarchy but if you are on r12 so r12 supports position hierarchy and notifications so r12 supports your employee supervisor hierarchy your position hierarchy and notifications and R12 supports more than 200 transaction types and uh, apart from these uh, read the implementation guide uh, you should never go in blind otherwise there are high chances to make the mistakes in implementation so these are the implementation considerations or you can say the implementation guidelines Be uh, so before uh, you are going to uh, before you make a decision to implement uh, AME you have to take some points into consideration, some guidelines, something you need to take care of. So this is all about the implementation considerations. Okay, so uh, that's all uh, about uh, uh, expanding AME and uh, how to um, use the AME for uh, different types of transactions. Uh, so this concludes my session. So let's see if I get any other uh, questions. Okay, so before uh, okay before concluding this session, I just wanted to um, uh, I just wanted to see the poll questions that we had asked you. Uh, okay, so uh, yeah. So basically, uh, uh, the first poll question was, uh, how are you managing approvals of your application access request? So basically, what uh, so uh, most of the uh, from most of the uh, people, I got a response that they are getting it from uh, by a mean of uh, emails. So I have also seen that uh, these approval requests are generally uh, uh, provided by email. So, uh, but. The disadvantage of these emails is that you don't have a traceability, you don't have an audit trail, you don't have a history. But if you go with AME, if you implement AME for this approval request, so you will have a history of uh, history of the, all the audit trails. You will know who, who submitted the access request, who approved it, when approved it, uh, when it was approved and what was the approvals response whether he rejected it some, uh, he, he accepted it and he or he uh, asked for additional information so these type of audit, audit trails you can have uh, next poll question was yeah for which purpose you are using the AME uh, so uh, the options were purchase revision approval, AP invoice approval, expense report approval, any other approval or not using AME or at all. So uh, most of the uh, in most of the uh, responses I got that they are not using AME at all. So uh, yeah, so what I uh, suggest is that uh, if you are planning for an approval for any of the transaction types, uh, then you should implement AME and uh, you should go ahead with it. Okay, so uh, okay, some 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 more thing I I wanted to discuss is that uh, if you want to so uh, since uh, there is no additional fees or additional license required to implement the AME, so if you want to check uh, whether your system is having whether your application is having AME installed or not, so what you can check is for there are some uh, CDA responsibilities available. So if you can look for these responsibilities. Uh, like approval management administrator, approval management business analyst, approval management analyst. So if you are getting these uh, responsibilities, 
you you can be sure that AME is installed in uh, your Oracle eBusiness Suite. Okay, so uh, that's all about AME. Uh, that's all about AME. And thanks for your. J Global is an Oracle Platinum partner and is a leading information technology services and solutions provider. We deliver the right combination of business knowledge, product and technical expertise, project management and flexible delivery models to every engagement to ensure every client's long-term growth and success in business. For more information, please visit www.jglobal.com. Jade Global is headquartered at San Jose, California with offices in Texas, New Jersey and India. You can call us on the numbers on your screen or email us at marketing at jadeglobal.com if you have any questions or if you want to know about our solutions and services. We'll help you out with any query you have. Thank you very much for attending this webinar and hope to talk to you soon.